Excellent. Steven? Four. Four. All right, and so, and then all of the rest of our staff, this is at least their second year. So we continue to come back every summer because we have a lot of fun, and we know that our participants have a lot of fun also. So back in December, December, we, the application pool was open, so applications opened on December 1st, and we had over 800 students at least start an application. So we had over 800 start an application, and in the end, um, oh, close to 400 had submitted their application. So you are one of 400 who had submitted their application. Uh, we had a little bit more females than males the submitting applications, and significantly more junior or seniors than we had juniors. Um, the pool of applicants came from a huge range of geographic locations. Um, Many out of country, out of states. The majority of our applicants come from California, but you can see that we draw applications from all over the place. All right, so sitting here um, are 30 Californians. <laughs> One, who's from New Jersey? Who's from New York? Where's my New Yorkers? You picked them up at the airport, right? right? <laughs> well, yeah, so maybe one of the New York people should be from Connecticut. Oh, okay. And okay, Connecticut. Connecticut, thank you. <laughs> and it's quite possible that the other New York person uh, is from Ohio. <laughs> to say that I did this analysis of the data last night about midnight. So <laughs> we were right on top of it. So we got New Jersey and Florida, Arizona, Oregon, and then um, several from outside of the U.S. as well. All right, so we have 42 participants this year, 22 girls and 20 boys. The majority of you, you like the applicant pool, are uh, going to be seniors next year. So 35 seniors and seven juniors. All right, so this is a long delay to the introduction, but my name is Megan McKenzie Bettis, and I'm going to be the program director this summer. You have all been interacting quite a lot with Rick Pomeroy. He is our executive director. And Rick is retiring from education on Tuesday. So he will not be joining us this summer, but he's very excited to go spend time with his granddaughters in Minnesota. So um, if you have program needs this year, uh, during the summer, I'm going to be your contact person. Um, between the two of us, 50 years of combined science teaching experience. Most of it is his. <laughs> All right. Um, and then we have a bunch of staff associates. So we have seven staff, staff associates. Six staff. Yeah, seven. All right. There's a lot of us. All right. Um, and so all of them are science teachers within the region. So Rick's primary job was as the science credential supervisor. So he has taught all of our staff associates as they became new science teachers. Um, well, I'm going to let you guys introduce yourself real quickly. Will you tell us who you are, how long you've been with YSP, and where you t teach? Can you do that for me? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Carla Cisan. Um, I This is my second year here, and I teach at Beckerville High School, so just 20 minutes away. Hi, my name is Sarah Imes, and I, this is my second year as well, and I teach here in town at Davis High School. Oh, <laughs> Hi, my name is Lindsay Choi. I teach Science 7 at Columbia Middle School, which is in Sunnyvale, California, which is near San Jose. Um, and this is my second year with YSP. Uh, I'm Kim Trenton, and this is my fifth year, and I teach at San Juan Valley High School in Daveville. I'm Michael Green. I teach chemistry out in Dixon, which is about 15 minutes away from here, and this is also my second year. Hi, my name is Stephen Ramsey. This is my fourth year, and I teach out in Elk Grove. Awesome. And then we have another associate, uh, Corinne Rushing. She is currently leading high school students on a tour of Ecuador. So she will be joining us at the beginning of July. This is her third. This is her third summer, and she teaches in Sacramento, so not far from here. Um, so you'll be working with us, but primarily your interest, I think, is going to be with the researchers and lecturers that you'll be working with. So all of the researchers are here as faculty members, as postdocs, 
um, as uh, affiliated with the university in some way. So you'll be working with faculty at UC Davis in your labs, and you'll also be seeing lectures of, uh, from uh, faculty members as well during our lecture series. All right, so some arrival pictures, this isn't you. But you all came, you got here in some way. <laughs> James. So James works for, alright? So today, uh, right now we're doing our orientation. After orientation, we'll have some time for dinner. Um, so dinner is going to be in the Segundo Dining Hall. So this is the Tercero housing area, um, but we will be eating in the Segundo Dining area. Uh, we can direct you in the right direction, or I think some of the staff is going to walk over there later as well. Um, so tonight, you are welcome to go there, or if your parents would like to take you out for one meal before, one more meal before you kick off the summer, you're welcome to do that. There's no sign out required. Students, your dining hall cards will get you into the dining hall. Parents, uh, they are going to ask you to pay. Um, I would go to Paisano's downtown. <laughs> Other recommendations? For sure. Andy Express. Okay. Dolly Cow. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of really good food in Davis. Okay. All right, uh, students at 7.30, we'd like to see you in the upstairs lounge uh, for a student-only orientation. So by 7.30, you're going to give mom or dad that last hug, you're going to give them a high five, you're going to say, I'll see you in six weeks, and then you're going to join us for another orientation. All right? Uh, directly following your, our student, whole group student orientation, we're going to have you pair up with your research group. So you have been placed in a team of seven students um, and each of you assigned one of our uh, staff associates to kind of just be your point person um, for and have meet with them during the summer just to check base, uh, touch base, talk about things. So you'll have a brief research orientation meeting immediately following our whole group meeting tonight. And then by 11 o'clock, you need to be in your rooms with the lights out. It's time to go to bed. It's going to be a busy, busy day tomorrow. Okay. So I know that maybe 11 seems early. Maybe it seems really late, it seems really late to me, but it might seem early to you, but you are going to need a lot of rest, okay, because we're going to ask you to do, keep, stay really busy this whole summer, so when you have the opportunity to sleep, please do so. It makes everybody happy. All right. All right, tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to get up to go to breakfast at the Dining Commons. Now, breakfast um, typically is not going to be at a set time. We don't all get up together and meet in the lounge and then walk over together, all right? We don't do that. So maybe on the first day, maybe on the second day, we'll do that just until you get your bearings. But that personal responsibility thing we talked about, it's going to be on you to make sure that you can get yourselves to the dining hall and get yourselves fed, all right? We'll make sure you know where it is, but if you miss it, you're going to be hungry. Because the dining hall isn't open all the time, it has some set meal times, which we'll talk about. Um, at 9 o'clock, so at about 8.40, we'll meet in the, uh, in the dorms, and then we'll walk over to our classroom where we'll have lectures every morning. Tomorrow at 9, we'll have another little orientation. We'll talk about a working in the adult world. And then from there, if you rented a bike, we'll pick up your bike, and then we'll also go and get your student ID cards. All right. So those student ID cards are going to be really important. Tomorrow when we meet, just make sure you bring some kind of ID card to prove who you are before they give you another ID card to prove who you are. All right. Um, after that, we'll have lunch. And then at about 1 o'clock, you'll talk to your research uh, team. But at about 1 o'clock, you'll meet with your, your staff associate, with your counselor, and make a plan for going out to meet your researchers. All right. So sometimes we talk to the researchers and say, yeah, great, be there at 1.15. Sometimes they say, we have a meeting at 1.00. Come see us at 2.30, all right? So there, your uh, counselor will take you, introduce you to your research lab, and let you know what the kind of schedule for the rest of the day is. And then dinner in the evening, and then again at 7, we're going to meet at the lounge just to have a little getting to know you activity, okay? So that's kind of what Monday looks like. Um, let's see. Uh, so this is some people getting their bikes registered, getting their Aggie cards, their Reg cards, their ID cards. You'll hear them called lots of different things. All right, Tuesday, you got to get yourself to breakfast, all right? Again, if you don't eat, you're going to go hungry, so make sure that you plan your schedule enough that you get time to get food, okay? Um, at 9, we have our first academic lecture with Dr. Arthur Shapiro. He is an expert on, like, butterflies. He's really cool. Um, and then at noon, or at some point after lecture, lecture ends at about 11.30, you're going to have to get yourself lunch. 
and then you're going to have to get yourself to your research lab in the afternoon. Okay. So one of the things when you meet your research uh, your research lab, they'll talk to you about what the schedule is for the, the afternoon the next day. You'll make sure you know when you're supposed to show up and where you're supposed to show up. All right. And then about 5:30, it's dinner. But again, we're not all going to walk over there together, so it's going to be up to you to make sure you get some food. All right. Um, the food is actually pretty good, right? Like you may have heard scary things about dorm food, but UC Davis has some of the best food. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, there's actually lots and lots of choices, um, and all of the food is labeled. So if you have any dietary restrictions, you'll be able to know. It's all labeled. It's nice. Um, it actually has some really good options. So. All right. We basically went through what a typical day looks like, right? So typically for those first two weeks, make sure you get some food. We'll do our lecture. You'll have a chance to get lunch. You'll go to lab in the afternoon. You'll come back and make sure you get dinner, and then you'll have some free time. So once we get through our first two weeks with our lecture series, you'll end up going to lab, lunch, and then lab. That's pretty much the only thing that's different. So that's your typical schedule. Um, you could be doing all kinds of things. You could be analyzing data, collecting data. Some of you may be doing some more computer-based research. So there's lots of different things you could potentially be doing in your labs. All right, so like I said earlier, part of our goal is to give you kind of a mentored exposure to what college is like. And so we do have some focus on academics beyond your research in your lab. Um, so we have a two-week lecture series, those first two weeks. In the mornings, we'll have lectures on uh, uh, various topics, including fragile X, um, algae. Uh, Dr. Shapiro talks about evolution in ecology. Uh, Dr. Sumners is going to talk about exploration of Mars. So we have a range of topics to, to look at. Um, and kind of to get you in that mentality of what college is going to be like and how fast-paced it is, we also will have an exam based on our lectures, as well as at least one of our uh, field trips. And that exam is going to be on July 12th. Okay? So one of the things that often surprises students, especially when they come to a university like UC Davis, which is on the quarter system, is that it moves so quickly. A quarter is only 10 weeks, so within two or three weeks, you could be taking a midterm, midterm exam. And so we want to give you kind of the idea of what that might be like. Okay? All right. Um, let's see. Oh, that's Dr. Kinsey. He wasn't available this year, but he's giving one of our lectures. Dr. Chang is not with the university. He's with a different affiliation. He used to be now. with the Center for Biophotonics. Oh, right. Yeah. All right. They are taking a look how excited they are. They're taking their lecture exam. <laughs> this kid up front is really excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so one of the things you're probably the most excited about is to be able to be here and do research in a lab. All right. So there are 42 individual research projects, um, and they were assigned, your research project has been assigned to you, you don't know it yet, but it has been assigned to you by our staff, um, and what we do is we look at some of your interests, and we look at the projects that are available, and then we do the matching based on um, your interests and what the project has to offer. Um, one of the things we like to emphasize is that don't get too hung up on the individual project. Right? You are here to experience what research is like, and you may look at it and think, oh my goodness, I have no idea what this topic is. And by the end of the program, you will be an expert in it, and you will love it more than you think you can. All right? So a lot of times we have kids who want to do genetics research, right? And then they get a project and it says tomato plants. Okay? And they're like, ah. There's so much research, genetics research that happens on tomato plants, okay? So keep a broad uh, and open mind today when you get your research project assignments. Um, our, all of our projects are primarily in biology, agricultural sciences, and environmental sciences, and we have a few others depending on what's available. Um, and so they will, your project assignment will be given to you tonight after student orientation when you meet with your counselors, okay? All right, so a couple of examples. Uh, this dude was measuring something about corn, and it was really tall by the end, right, Rick? That's taller than he was. Taller than he was. All right, uh, they were, this girl was sitting beta carotene in a um, dietary lab at the USDA, a USDA lab, affiliated lab. Um, they break down, so it had to all be in yellow light. So she was in yellow light the whole time. 
Um, they were looking at re uh, weed eradication. Um, I actually did a field. He was out in the field of it. So you'll be in different, depending on your labs, it's different settings because research actually happens in a ton of different settings. It's not just all wet lab. Um, some of it is. Some of it's staring at really cool microscopes. Okay. So there's lots of different types of research that you'll have the opportunity to participate in. Okay. Is this the, the strawberries? Yeah. Okay. So UC Davis actually has like major patents on strawberries. Um, and not just on strawberries, but also on the packaging of how strawberries are delivered to grocery stores. So they were actually researching um, strawberry packaging. Um, if I remember right, this girl was working on circadian rhythms in plants. Um, okay, and some of it's are going to be computer based as well. Okay, so at the end of the yeast of six weeks, you're going to walk away not only having done your research but also have written about your research in a research paper. So it's going to be journal quality research paper. Um, and it's going to be based on journal style guidelines. We'll talk to you about how to find that out and what that's going to look like. And you're going to, um, it's not like we're going to say, all right, ready, go write your paper. Okay, we're going to structure it and scaffold it so that throughout the six weeks, you are putting little parts of your paper together and building up to your final paper. So we'll ask you to write an abstract and give a prospectus presentation about your research. We'll ask you to write an outline and have your counselor help you go over your outline. Ask you to do a rough draft and also, a, and ultimately a final draft that you review, your counselor reviews, your lab reviews as well. Okay. Um, in addition to your paper, you're going to give a presentation about your research as well. So those last two days of the program is all about the research presentation. Um, and so that's going to happen on August 2nd and 3rd. And that's, the location is in 100 Hunt Hall. So we'll make sure you know where it is so you can tell mom and dad where it is uh, as well. And then the scheduling of that is going to be based on what information students tell us. Okay, so this is another place where that, that personal responsibility is going to um, come into play. So around July 17th, we're going to ask you, okay, when can your research mentor come or not come? When can your family or parents come or not come? And then based on that information, we'll build the schedule, okay? Um, so we do open it up to anybody who wants to come within the community, and we encourage parents and families to come. We encourage anybody you work with in your research uh, lab to come as well, and then typically those the, or those presentations you have a 15 minute time slot, and that includes questions and answers. So you'll at least be talking for about 10 minutes with about five minutes for question and answer. Okay. All right. All right. So you are earning uh, five units of pass no pass university credit for this course. And so grading is based on your participation. Your counselor groups will talk to you a little bit about what the journal expectations are, um, some other activities. When you go home in the fall, we're going to ask that you give a presentation at to some uh, class at your school. 20% um, is based on other assignments like your abstract and your presentation. The uh, safety survey your research, uh, your lab groups are going to talk about. 20% um, on our exam. 20% on that research paper, and 20% on that research presentation. All right. All right. Uh, field trips. We are going to go on some pretty awesome field trips this summer. Uh, so the very first one is the uh, Bodega Marine Lab. UC Davis has a marine lab out in Bodega Bay where they do all kinds of cool research out there. And actually, if you're enrolled at UC Davis as an undergraduate, you can go there for a quarter and do re live there and do research. So we'll go look at what they're doing. We're going to go on an overnight field trip um, up to Donner Summit this year. Uh, we'll go out to the Monterey Bay Aquarium and look at the fish. Um, it, we'll also go to Alcatraz and San Francisco. And then at the end of the summer, we'll go to the Lake Tahoe Research Center. So UC Davis also has a research center happening, uh, research happening at Lake Tahoe. We get to go out on the research vessel. It's actually one of my favorite field trips. So it's a pretty cool one. All right, uh, this is out at Bodega. Um, they have all these like things and tanks. You can look at little snails. They have a cool little uh, uh, touch tank. Uh, San Francisco. Monterey Bay. Uh, this is the research vessel. And you can see some of the work that they do when they get there. Two. 
We spend the inn, we hang out on the beach. All right. So a little bit about life on campus. For some of you, this may be your first time. Anybody next, second summer at UC Davis hanging out for the summer? Anybody do Cosmos here last summer? Oh. Anybody do Cosmos somewhere else? Okay. So some of us, we've had some college campus life living. Um, cool. I'm, welcome to Davis, everyone. That's awesome. All right. So one of the things about uh, campus life is that you are going to be best friends and hang out with these people for a long time, right? So we got to learn to both live and work together, all right? Um, so making sure that you're building positive relationships with your roommates and with each other. Um, getting places on time, all right? That's one of those personal responsibility things that's really important, making sure you're aware of your own time. Setting, setting that alarm, if you're somebody who has trouble setting alarms, making sure you have a backup alarm, okay? making sure that you get places on time, um, and develop personal safety habits. All right? Davis is super safe, um, it's a great community, but you do need to take some personal responsibility for your safety and being aware of your surroundings as well. Um, and so we do, as I've said before, we have a big emphasis on safety and responsibility. Um, Locking up your bikes is going to be really important. Michael's going to talk to us about bike safety tonight um, and making sure that you're traveling with people. Okay, um, This is the uh, area, the activity. Arc. Arc. Yeah, but what's it saying? Activities and recreation. Oh, activities. <laughs> activities and recreation center. Um, so we'll talk about how to access that. Uh, part of it's under construction this year, but you can still access it. Um, so dorm life. Uh, there's a, is the bowling alley open again? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the bowling alley is open and there's a place to pay, play pool on campus too. Okay, and so um, parents and family members, we have a couple of resources for you while you're away and students you can too. Um, UC Day, or the YSB website um, has forms and other information and then we also post to our Facebook page. So if you haven't joined our Facebook page yet, the public one, students, if you haven't joined the private group, I can help you with that too. But uh, parents, there's that public uh, Facebook page that you can join and we'll be posting pictures as we go along the summer as well. Okay? All right, so a couple of rules. Oh, you want to go back? Here. I got it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Right, go ahead. Okay. All right, a couple of rules. Um, so students, you should not be riding in cars unless we have specifically set up arrangements for you. All right? So you should not be riding in cars that are not your uh, parents. And this includes like siblings or cousins or auntie and uncle, unless we specifically talk about it, okay? Um, so there's also, I don't, it's funny, you shouldn't have to say this, but we do. There's no drugs, okay? No alcohol, no cigarettes, and no intimate personal behavior this summer, please, okay? Um, if you do happen to have somebody, maybe you have a friend who is participating in Cosmos, is on campus or something, and they want to come visit you, great. They can come to the dorms, but we ask that you stay on the first floor lounge, okay? So we're not having anybody other than your immediate family members go upstairs to our, our dorm area, okay? One of the things is that it's, it's your house, right? And it's not just your house, it's 41 other people's house as well. And so we want to keep guests downstairs just to respect everybody's space. Um, we do have curfew, so at 10 p.m. you need to be in the building, and by 11 you need to be in your room. Now, we know you don't always go to bed at 11. We think you should go to bed at 11, okay? So I highly encourage you to go to bed um, and get plenty of sleep because we promise these researchers that you will be ready to work and eager and aware and um, ready to participate. And you can't do that if you haven't been well rested. So please, please, please make sure you're getting enough sleep during the summer. Um, go to bed at 11. That's when you got to be in your room anyway. All right? When you have free time, you're welcome to um, explore campus, explore downtown. We'll talk about kind of the, the regulations around that. We are going to ask that you sign in and out so that we know where you are when you're not either at meals or at uh, lecture or at your lab. All right? And then um, you'll notice that we are a huge biking community. It is this huge biking community. It is actually state law that you wear your helmet. So the expectation is that you are wearing your helmet when you are on your bike. If for whatever reason we notice that you're not, you may suffer a virtual bike accident. And if you get in a bike accident without a helmet on, you likely will have hit your head. And if you've hit your head, you can't ride your bike for a while. Okay? 
So if you're not wearing your helmet and we see that, we're going to take your bike privileges away for a while, and then you're going to be running really fast as everybody else bikes to the movies. Okay? So please wear your helmet. Um, I will say from personal experience, I have been in a relatively serious bike accident. Okay? I have the, the plates and screws to prove it, and my bike helmet uh, cracked. So I was really glad that I was wearing my helmet, because otherwise it would have been my head. All right. All right. Um, we know typically, like lots of, we have a lot of free time, usually after dinner, but we know that some people like to get up in the morning and go for a run or go swimming early in the morning. Typically, we ask that you always try to take at least two people with you. But in some cases, that's not possible. And so we have a early morning athletics kind of release form. So if you're going to be working out by yourself, we, there are some expectations about what that looks like. So if you can ask, if mom or dad is here or adult is here with you tonight, if you can ask them to fill that out. If they're not here, if you flew here, your counselor can work that out with you. But if you're going to be gone in the morning doing some kind of activity by yourself, um, we want to know about it, all right? And so that includes, like, if you're going to go to the Hickey pool and swim in the morning and you can't find two or three, uh, one or two people to go with you. If you're going to go over to the ARC in the morning, you can't find one or two people to go with you. Now, if you are a runner and you are just running through campus or running through the streets of Davis, we ask that you do not go alone, all right? So I know that at least one person has a running uh, plan right now for them, and they have people that they're running with, but if you are just you running, we're going to ask that you stay with at least one person, if not two, because all of the swimming and the arc, there's other people around. If you're out there running by yourself and you get an accident or you get hurt or something, we won't know that. So runners, we are going to ask you to take another person with you. And we can work all of that. We can work with you on that too, OK? All right. Um, so with visitors, we touched, touched on that a little bit. Um, but when you're in the, you shouldn't be riding in cars unless it's your parents or one of us. Um, if you have to go somewhere with your lab, which some of you will, we'll make arrangements for that for you. Um, if for whatever reason you, maybe you live in the same town as somebody else who's going home and you want to catch a ride with them, we will work with you on that one. But in general, you should not be driving with anyone. Um, if parents, if you want to come visit, parents, family, if you want to come visit, we recommend Sundays is kind of the best day to come and visit. On Saturdays, they're busy doing uh, our field trips. And most of the week, they're busy doing lectures or working in their labs. Um, but Sundays are kind of a free and open day that we don't really plan much, so that's a great day. Monday and Wednesday evenings are good evenings as well to come. Davis has an awesome farmer's market on Wednesday nights um, that some of the, us will go to anyway. Um, but those are the nights that we recommend that you come, all right? Uh, we do ask, though, if you're going to leave, that you complete a checkout form. So if you found, you should have found, probably found it in your packet. There's at least two in your packets. Um, for now, we have extras, and you can always print them from the website as well, all right? So the 4th of July is on a Wednesday this year, um, and we will go to the City of Davis fireworks excuse me, event on, on Wednesday night, but we know some of you might want to go home. Um, so if you're going to go home for the 4th of July, uh, we ask that you do it after your research ends on Tuesday. So you'll talk to your research lab about what time you're going to be ending on Tuesday. You can go home from Tuesday afternoon. And then we ask that you not come back until building curfew on the 4th of July, all right? Because we will all be gone until building curfew on the 4th of July, and there won't be any staff in the, in the dorms if you come back too early, all right? So we ask if you're going to be gone for the 4th of July, that you come back later in the evening, um, or come back uh, right before fireworks and come with us to the fireworks. It's actually, Davis does a really nice, it's a nice show, okay? All right, you gotta eat, we promise. Mom, dad, auntie, uncle, we promise they'll eat, all right? DC um, is open for breakfast from 6.45 to 8.30. So it's pretty early. It, it closes pretty early for breakfast. So if you don't get up early enough to get breakfast, you're just gonna go hungry. So make sure you make it in there, all right? Um, with all these DC hours, you have to be in the door by the time it closes, and they'll, if you can still be eating. Like if you get in there at 8.25, they're not gonna kick you out five minutes later, you can still eat your meal, but they won't be replenishing the food as much, so it's better to go a little bit earlier before they close, all right? Lunch is between 11.30 and 1.30, all 
all right? Um, after our lecture series, you'll work with your lab to decide what time you get them to come back for lunch. They know that you got to eat too. Um, and then dinner is between 4.45 and 7, okay? Um, on trips, when we go on field trips, we'll, per, we'll do uh, pack out lunches, sack lunches, and, um, and then on a couple of occasions, we'll also pack out dinner with us. And so we'll work with, show you how that works. And then at the end of the summer, we have a, a researcher barbecue. We invite your researchers to come um, and have barbecue with us. Okay. All right. Sorry. So we mentioned before, um, the ARC is the Activities and Recreation Center. Um, it's a, it's a full-scale gym. Um, what parts are under renovation this year? Do you know? No. Okay. So parts of it are under renovation this year. The entrance is around the other side, um, but it still is totally functional. Um, the farmer's market, like I mentioned, Davis has an awesome farmer's market. Downtown Davis is awfully cute. Um, there's lots of shops and coffee places. Um, there's two movie theaters in town, so there's lots to do downtown as well. You can do jogging and tennis, swimming, basketball, all kinds of options uh, for you for, for entertainment and recreation in your free time. Okay. All right, communication, cell phones are okay. They're everywhere now. We do ask that you refrain from using them during lectures and to limit your use when you're in the lab, right? Because you're there to do work. It's kind of like your teachers at school know that you never ever use them when you're in class, okay? So kind of treat it the same way, not using it when you're um, in lab. Um, uh, parents, if you'll try to call in the evenings, that's when they're gonna have the most free time to talk to you. Um, and we will try to make sure that they call you. Actually, let me say this now. Students, call your parents, okay? You need to call them like this week, like twice. At least twice this week. Next week, call them once or twice. All right, call them every week. Call them every week. They'll like you a lot. Like, and this is advice for college too, okay? Call them. They really like it. My mom, I called my mom every Sunday night in college because it made her happy. Call your parents. If you don't, then call us. And then we're going to come and poke you and tell you to call them. Okay? Call your parents. Um, we have a program on call cell phone also. So students, if you ever get lost or you get confused or you're not sure, we, be, we have a phone that one of the counselors always have. Adults, same thing for you. If you have any concerns and you need to get a hold of us or you can't get a hold of your child, you can call our cell phone. Um, in your, on your name tag, on the back of that name tag is the um, counselor on call phone number. It also has my phone number. And later tonight, we're going to ask you to write down your counselor's phone number as well. So if you need something, then you have all the phone numbers you need just right there on your name tag. Okay? Um, I'm sure you've already found the internet access. Yeah, because that's usually the first thing we find. Um, so it's fully up. Uh, Wi-Fi is in all of the dorms. Um, you should be able to just log in with your login information that you know. We'll get it there, though. Okay. okay. You should be able to log okay. in eventually. Yeah. All right. Um, regardless of the fact that it's available. So it's going to be available all over campus. You are responsible for um, following the UC Davis acceptable use policy. All right? So you're not downloading anything you shouldn't be downloading. You're not looking at anything you shouldn't be looking at. All right? If that becomes an issue or a pro uh, problem, we might be parting ways for the summer. All right, so that could result in program dismissal if we have an issue. So please make sure that you are using the internet appropriately. All right, we talked about this a little bit. Um, most of you either brought or rented a bicycle. Um, so helmets are required, all right? Um, and then they should also be registered. Um, technically, it's California law that your bicycle is registered. Um, it's actually super helpful. Uh, the Davis Police Department, you can go over there. Actually, it's TAPS, right? TAPS does the, the bike registration. It's actually super helpful because if, for whatever reason, your bike is stolen, um, if it's registered, they'll help you. If it's not registered, they'll say, sorry, we can't really help you because there's no way to track it. Um, so I do highly recommend, it, it technically is a little law, that you get it registered. I want to say, at least when I started going to Davis, bike theft was the number one crime in Davis. Um, so you do need to be careful with your bike, okay? Um, where you, if you rented a bike, we'll go pick them up tomorrow. And if you haven't already given your rental money to Lindsay, she will take it from you this evening, please, all right? Uh, loss of rental bike is the renter's responsibility. This also includes the key to the lock, 
Okay, so at least once a summer, somebody loses a bike key, um, or they lock their bike somewhere and forget where they locked it. Okay, so that personal responsibility thing, make sure that you're keeping track of your, of your belongings, all right? Um, locking your bike is really important. It's important to make sure that you lock your bike. You not only lock it, but you lock it properly. Um, so, Michael, are you going to talk about bike locking today? Of course. Excellent. All right. <laughs> so, Michael will talk about that. Um, it's pretty important. If anybody brought a, a fancy bike with like a cool seat, you might even want to take the seat in with you. I lost my handlebars one summer. My bike seat got stolen last summer. So. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, it's the biggest problem we have generally is bikes, um, but luckily it's, it's pretty low key problem. So, all right, medical and emergency procedures. We are going to have no medical concerns at all this summer. Um, but in case we do, if it's a genuine emergency, you, you call 911, all right? Go ahead and do that. Um, if we have some kind of earthquake, we are in California, where there's a fire, um, we're going to meet in parking lot 48. So that's the dairy barn parking lot. If you said hello to the cows today as you came in, that's going to be the parking lot that we meet in. Um, please don't stop and call home. We're going to get everybody gathered, make sure everybody's accounted for, and then we'll start making those emergency calls and letting everybody know that we're safe and okay, all right? So this is one of the best pieces of advice Rick gave me when I started this program. I'd never heard it before, but he always suggests that you have the number of a relative or friend that is out of the country. So you'll notice that, or not out of the country, out of the state. So you'll notice there's a spot on your name tag for that. That's because if for whatever reason we have an emergency in California, and all of the uh, phone lines, it may be really hard to communicate with people nearby, but it may be easier to communicate with somebody that is further away. So that he recommends that you have one point person to call. Which emergency was it that you all called your brother? Uh, one of the earthquakes in California, and they called us and we called them to make sure everybody, because half of my family's in California and half's in Boston, and so we called all the Boston people to let us know, and then they could report that we were all okay. So. Awesome. And then if you're feeling poorly, go ahead and let Kim know. Kim, can you give us a thank you? Um, or your counselor, all right? We want you to feel good this whole, this whole summer, but we definitely don't want you to feel badly and not <coughs> tell somebody because you don't want to bother them, all right? We'd rather address things when they're a little problem than when they're a big problem. And so please, even if you're just not, like maybe you have a stomach ache for the last three days, come tell us, all right? Even if it's a low-key problem, we want to know. We want to know. We really, really, really do. Um, so for example, on one summer, we had a student who jumped out of bed on the first night and um, hurt their toe and didn't want to bother us, so we went to bed. And the next morning, we woke up, and his toe was huge, and we ended up spending most of the first day in the medical offices. All right, so please tell us right away if something is bothering you. You won't be bothering us if you wake us up at three in the morning. You might just have to knock louder on the door, but they're all really happy to get up with you at three in the morning if you're, if you're not feeling well. They call you. <laughs> it's true. They wake up, but then they call me, so. All right, so you are here. You likely don't know anybody, although um, I already saw like some friend groups happening, which I was really excited about. Please be open to making meeting new people, all right? You're here for six weeks. You'll have lots of time to get to know everyone really well. Um, so make some new friends. You'll have opportunities to make new friends with your roommates, with everybody in our, our whole group, um, within your research group and your lab community. Um, you'll have a chance to meet people from different schools and different cultures. So really take that opportunity to get to know new people and maybe push yourself a little bit out of your comfort zone um, in terms of going up and introducing yourselves or including other people. So that's one of my recommendations also is that if you're, say you're all going to go downtown to a movie, maybe you stop by somebody's room and you say, hey, we're going to the movie. Do you want to come with us? So include people in your invitations to go do things so that you all can get to know each other um, even better. Okay. All right. Yay, Viking, Davis. Uh, this was previous field trips. We really do spend a lot of time together and get to know each other really well. Um, and it's kind of on you what your experience is going to be like, right? So if you choose for your experience to be you sitting in the dorm reading your AP bio book or playing 
I'm supposed to know this. What's that video game they're playing Fortnite. now? Fortnite. Thank you. Okay. If that's the experience you choose to have, that is not going to be awesome. But if you choose to have an experience that is meeting new people and going out and doing new things, then you're going to have a really awesome and different experience um, to talk about than the people that you come home to um, in the fall. All right. So a couple of quick uh, questions that you may have already asked. Um, so for laundry, it, they've done away with quarters. My mom used to say quarters for me for days, but they now take debit cards. Um, so that's helpful. Uh, there's ATMs at the silo, which is one of the student unions on campus, as well as the larger student union. And then there's all of the major banks are in downtown Davis. Um, if you are leaving campus, it needs to be with an adult um, or in groups of three or more YSP students, all right? So we do ask that if you're going to go downtown to a movie, you're going to go downtown to get food or something that you grab two friends to come with you. And we'll talk about the sign out procedures tonight, but we are going to ask that you sign out. We talked a little bit about morning athletic workouts being kind of the exception, um, but they still need to be communicated to us. And you will still need to sign out if you do that, okay? If you have some special occasion that you need to leave the program for for a day or two, we've talked actually at least with one of you, I believe, about making that happen. Um, if you have a bike problem, if you have a bike repair issue, um, if it's from the bike barn, you can take it back to the bike barn and they'll help you. Um, Michael's going to be our bike dude, so if you have questions, he can help you with your bike. Um, there's lots of uh, bike places for repair if you have a bigger problem. All right. And then you should have already completed your safety training. Rick sent you information about your safety training. So hopefully you have already finished that online and your research groups will check in on that tonight as well. All right, uh, a couple of important program dates just to think about. I mentioned this earlier, but our research symposium is August 2nd and 3rd. And then um, you personal responsibility to help coordinate dates about which one works for your families and your research lab. And then the program ends on August 4th. So at the end of August 3rd program, the, the presentations are done. And maybe mom or dad um, or family is like, all right, your presentation's done. Let's go. We're going to, you have nothing else going. But please, please don't take your student home until the 4th. All right? Because that evening of the 3rd, we're going to have a student-only talent show. It's a lot of fun. There's the packing fest, also known as the crying fest, right? They're all sad to see each other go. Student-only It means the parents can't be there. You can be there. Yeah. All right. So that last night is really important. It's really a, a great chance for the students to have that last minute, uh, that last time together um, to celebrate all of the hard work and awesome times they had. So please don't plan on, on going home until the 4th. Okay. All right. Whew. We talked a long time before. Good job. Thanks. Good job. All right. All right. Um, registered and gotten your key, they will, um, here's the, the thing, they often lock right immediately behind you, okay? So please make sure that when you're leaving your room, you bring that, that card with you to swipe as well, okay? This is true when you go to college, most colleges as well, that reg card that we're going to get, um, that student ID at most universities that acts as like the everything card. During the summer, it doesn't work on our dorm rooms, but during the school year, it usually does for students. So make sure you have your cards with you when you leave your room, okay? Um, if you haven't already, anything besides your name tag itself that you have in that front pocket, move it to the zipper pocket, please, okay? Because at least, actually so far I haven't heard of it, but maybe I just didn't. Um, somebody loses the thing straight out of their, their uh, name tags on the first day including their, their room key. So move it to the zipper pocket right now and keep any important thing in the zipper. All right, yes? The cards have to be returned in the condition that they're in now. Mm -hmm. If you decide to try and get in your room by using the card to jimmy the lock, it'll cost you an extra $25 to replace the card. So that was something that we didn't do last year that kind of got caught by surprise. So. The cards are used over and over and over again, and if we give them back a card that they can't use, they'll charge us twenty. They'll they'll charge you twenty five dollars. So the same for a lost card. Yeah. Other questions that I can answer? Yes. Yeah, I actually.
actually would while you're in Davis. Um, technically, it's the law. Um, I've registered mine just because I know when I'm riding around Davis, if, if for whatever reason it disappears, then they can track it. Um, I think bike registrations now are $12. Maybe. Okay. It's like 8 or 10 12, 8 or I see, 12 I feel like last time I did it was 10 I, so I feel like now it must be 12 <laughs> So the rental bikes are already registered. Taps is closed today. Uh, they'll be open tomorrow and there will be time for those of you to buy your own bikes when the rest of the group goes to get their bike in the rental area that would probably be a good time to go to yeah. Taps and register your bike. Yeah. No, it's, it's really easy. Um, we can take a, get a group to go over to. Um, that's another thing I didn't mention. Michael mentioned it uh, today a little bit but uh, Bike lights are really important as well if you're biking at night. Um, we, we're we a serious biking community and they will pull you over for not having a bike light. All right. So if you also, if you blow through a stop sign, they can and will pull you over for blowing through a stop sign and it will go on your driving record. So you do, Michael talked about all of the, of the regulations around bike riding tonight, but we take our bike riding seriously here at Jameis. All right, other questions? Yes? You don't. You don't. I know, it's funny. But they, and, and, and don't think you can out bike the bike cop because I have watched him chase someone down. <laughs> yeah. I've also watched him sit at the stop signs and just watch people, one after another, go through and, and, and ticket them. So, obey the laws, okay? He just sits there and just goes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, long your issues, do they also take cash? They do not. They only take debit cards, correct? Which? The laundry machines. They only take debit they cards. They only take debit. Yeah. So. And then if you need to, um, like, uh, Rite Aid across the, well, I guess we're not across the street anymore, but they sell those, like, preloaded, some preloaded card, uh, debit cards you can use. Kim can talk to you about that. Sure. She's nodding her head like she knows what she's talking about. Yes. So we do have four laptops. Um, so if you need a laptop to chat, we're gonna. Uh, you can check it out from the office. Uh, we are the first door. We're right off the lounge uh, on this on the second floor. Um, this is the first year we haven't had a separate computer room, and we're gonna try this laptop checkout if you need to check one in and out uh, periodically. Okay. Yeah. You need some kind of picture ID. So it can be your driver's license, passport, or a school ID okay. would work as well. Yeah. Can I answer any other questions? Cool. So um, until 730 Students will see you back in the second floor lounge at 7.30. Um, get them to take you out. Uh, but you can also <laughs> go to Segundo Dining. So your dining cards will work for this first meal um, for students only, okay? Um, and then is anybody going immediately over to walk people over? Are you good? No? Okay. So uh, there's a map in the on the second floor, and then uh, I get all turned around. These, that way. These go for it. The easiest way to get to the Segundo dining, dining Commons is you came down Old Dairy Road. Oh, yeah. If you just go north on Old Dairy Road, it gets to the stop sign. If you're riding your bike, make sure you stop. And then it goes past the parking structure. Just keep going straight north. It goes past the parking structure, past the arc. And if you keep going straight and don't veer, you will eventually run into the, the backside of the Segundo Dining Commons. So just go out to Old Dairy Road and go north. Carly, that means the setting sun is on your left. Carly, can you talk briefly about the UC Davis app? Oh yes, yeah. so if you would like an easy access to a map, I would download the UC Davis mobile app. Um, if you need a building or something, you can just type it into the search bar. There's tons of resources there for you. It's free, so I She's highly recommend downloading that right now um, because it has a map preloaded on there. Cool. All right, students, we'll see you at 7.30 um, in the second floor lounge. Right. Woo! Good job. There's Carla on the internet. Yeah. Is that me? Yes. You. Wow. Oh. Oh, the camera's on it now.